Should it be solved? Number one says, I agree we shouldn't support this black man. Uh, this black man play for that state. But why do we never keep the same rhetoric for countries like the USA, Belgium, England, Australia, Germany, etc.? So who the black man in question here would be this black man right here. Uh, you guys should be able to see that pretty well. Yeah, this black man here. Um, there's a tweet here that says, uh, well, the original tweet said, not this N-word, though. And it shows the picture of this black man uh, representing Israel. Uh, but the person who, retw who retweeted it, uh, Era Nation, says, a black man representing Israel is a problem. But y'all got American, British, French, and Belgium citizenship, countries that did far worse to blacks and Africans than Israel has and will ever do to Africans misplaced outrage just because you saw Arabs doing it on the internet. Um, seems like that's the only um, image or tweet from, from that um, from that particular tweet. So it came, this uh, prompt came with a second attachment. This is from Nick Young. I think that's Swaggy P. He used to play in the NBA. He says, so the police shot and killed a 36-year-old black lady holding a pot because she said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, and we out here playing for the USA. That's a very interesting tweet from Swaggy P. I didn't expect that from him, but kudos to that brother. Um, before we uh, start the conversation, let's see if Anthony has his sound together. Anthony, how are you this week? Yeah, yeah, I got it together, Coco. Peace, brother, man. Peace to all the brothers on the panel, man. Happy Marcus Garvey Day. Yeah, absolutely. Same to you, and thanks for coming through as well. Um, with that said, I guess let's let's start this conversation. Uh, should we stop number one? I agree. We shouldn't support this black man play for that state, but why do we never keep the same rhetoric for countries like the USA, Belgium, England, Australia, Germany, etc.? I guess I could throw in France in particular there too. Trigabi two six two plus says. Sad thing is the brother in that picture is Ghanaian. That's a that's an interesting that's an in, interesting revelation there. Um so with that said, let's talk about it. <clears throat> How come we don't we don't treat um America with the same rhetoric? Let's start it off with with, with only this time. Only what say you yeah, so I, I, that's that's the thing. I don't know <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> uh I don't, first off, what's this guy's name? Africa? Like, <laughs> like, all right, okay. Um, but I don't know why. Because realistically, see, me personally, I, I give America the same rhetoric. You know? Um, I give America the same rhetoric. So I don't know. Um, I don't know about this. Why don't we give America the same rhetoric? But as far as, you know, say why Americans wouldn't give America the same rhetoric, because they're American. You know, and and I think we have to really come to. I think, I, I, like I said, I wrote this maybe a decade ago, but it, it goes along the lines of if you identify as um, no, if you're an African but you identify as an American, right? Then why would you care about Africa? You know, or even why would you care about uh, uh, yeah? I mean, that's pretty much it. Why would you care about Africa? Or and 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 more importantly, if you identify as an American, right? When America and and an African country go to war, whose side are you on? And the reality is this: if you if you if you do a broad survey, now obviously there's, there's exceptions to everything. You know what I mean? There's exceptions to everything. But if you do a broad survey, people are going to be on the side of America. Like people, quote unquote, Americans are going to be on the side of America. You know, and so just the same. You know, in fact, I just saw this um, today. Israel put out a tweet where they're 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 going around, you know, making a dumb meme. I guess I don't know. Um, they're asking random people who are not white, you know, are you a white colonizer? And everybody's like, no, we're not white. This is a diverse country, and it's a great country. So, uh, you know, I'm from Dominican Republic. I'm from Brazil. I'm from, you know, whatever, right? You know, I'm from India. I'm from Pakistan. I'm from India. You know, all that kind of stuff, right? And the point being that 
that's this is why it's so important to be in Africa, and this is why it's so important to understand nationalism, right? Because a lot of times you are going to be loyal to the nation that you're in. Yes, you're going to be uh, uh, loyal to the to the nation that gives you citizenship. A lot of times. And 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 you know, obviously there are exceptions, but the rule is: Hey, you're in America. Who do you want to have the most medals from the Olympics? America. And how does America get the most medals? Put those black people to work to get medals. You know, and it's the same. The guy is, uh, looks like this guy is, uh, you know, he's probably an Israeli citizen. So how does so so what does he do? He represents this country and gets it some medals. Cause why? That's his country. He doesn't have any loyalty to Ghana. Definitely don't got no loyalty to Nigeria. Definitely don't got no loyalty to Jamaica, South Africa, not even America, not even the United States of America. This is this is this is the nature of the world. This is the nature of our species at this point. And and we have to start looking at it from, you know, from that scientific standpoint and say, yeah, you know, realistically I think that we we should be trying to back away from these uh European nations, but but it's almost like it's a dollar short and a day late. You got, I don't know, maybe a hundred million displaced Africans around the world, right? It's not going to change tomorrow. And those displaced Africans are 95% going to be loyal and resolute with the, the nations that they are displaced to. 95%. And of course, you could always bring up the 5% exception, but 95%. And because of that, it's like, you know, we as African people, we have to either individually, like I do, trickle back into the continent and try to try to become nationalists over there, or um, forget it. And 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 actually, sorry, I forgot the assignment. Um, and what Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey would say the same thing in the sense of go back home. <laughs> go back home, build up a nation for yourself. Stop trying to build this white man's nation because it's not going to do nothing for you. That's it. Appreciate that. Only before you go, though, uh, let me just read this one comment from Trigger that was addressed to you. He says, I would do you one better, Oni. How can any black American talk about advocating for Palestine but call themselves an American? Because America funds Israel. Uh, What's that word? Uh, You should side with Israel, not Palestine. So, only you, do you want to respond to that? The thing is this. This is the thing that surprised me. I talked to a, a, a real African American. You know, um, you know. There's a lot of there's a lot of people who are you know educated and entertained on Twitter. And there's a lot of people off of social media. The the African American off of social media, right? Supports Ukraine. Supports Israel. By and large. Now, now, obviously, you know, if you if you want social media. You might you might not you know you might see exception especially like young people you might see an exception but like the older heads because you got to think about it this way in fact I'll tell y'all this man I even I didn't want to admit it so I don't I don't want to say which relative one of my relatives heard that Pat Bennett guy whatever you know that guy who was shit talking uh, Haiti and said Haiti got an earthquake because of you know voodoo or yeah. something yeah, one of my, I don't want to say which relative because you know probably a little too close they was like yup that's why they shouldn't do that stuff I'm telling you. A lot of people like like don't let social media fool you. Uh, don't let the youth fool you, or the youth rhetoric fool you, or the or the, the the loud ones fool you. A lot of people silently like they will argue. Yeah, you gotta have a strong Israel. You gotta have a strong Ukraine. They they'll tell you this. So so yeah, you know you know trigger happy is you know you know trigger happy. I don't know where trigger happy is, but um. You know, don't let don't don't think that Black Americans, by and large, are against uh, um, Israel on social media. Yes, but but if you if you go to the uh, to to the source of, I mean, if you go to some people, I'm telling you, really, like I was shocked. You know, shit, I almost wanted to send them social media, <laughs> but that's it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, Oni. Uh, yeah, good co- good conversation coming through on the chat. I appreciate all you guys. Keep them coming. I'll try to read off as many comments as I can. If not, I'll put them up on the screen. Um, let me go uh, to to Buana next. Buana, what say you? Well, for me, this is a sticky subject, you know, because 
I understand that nationalism, you know, and people, countries, you know, is touchy to their hearts, regardless of the other politics they may hold. You know, some people may be very touchy about their politics. So if you are a, 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 in Germany as a black person in Germany, you represent, you you feel like you are a German a citizen, you know? So when, you, when it comes to, uh, when we start talking about nationalistic politics, or when we start talking about politics in, in concerns like Garveyism and things of that nature, I don't hold certain people to certain standards, especially when they have not made declarations of such. Where if you say you're in a, if you say you, know, you don't define yourself as a Garveyite, you don't define yourself as a, a black nationalist kind of person, I wouldn't hold you to a certain standard. I would just hold you to the standard that you declare yourself as. I don't expect a person like Le LeBron James to practice black consciousness politics, especially in the field in, of basketball. I don't expect him to do that or even talk to those regards. He represents himself as a black American person. So I hold him to that specific standard. There were even athletes, former athletes. I remember a brother named Craig Hodges. Craig Hodges was a person who had uh, black consciousness politics. So he really was trying to do certain things within the NBA and was trying to recruit people like Jordan and at the time Magic Johnson to do certain things in terms of representing, uh, representing themselves in, in, in the field of basketball. So he was trying to include his consciousness politics within the field of basketball. But if some of our brothers and sisters around the world don't do that or make those kinds of declarations, I don't hold them to that standard. There was another brother, Abdul Raouf. Abdul Raouf used to play basketball. I can't remember if exact first basketball team, but his politics or his motivation was religion, Islam. And he was willing to even get be ousted of the NBA <laughs> off of Islam. You know, so that was his that was his foundation ideologically. So I, I kind of like would hold him to that standard and say, well, I can't uh, stand up for the, the um, American National Anthem when these group of people are bombing my brothers and sisters in Muslim Muslim states and Muslim areas. I, these people don't represent me. So if you don't really hold yourself to a specific standard, you know, I won't necessarily say, well, just because you have a black skin, you should think like this. It doesn't go that way. So this in this guy's mind, this is this um Israeli guy's mind. He just as he's an Israeli who happened to be black, <laughs> who happens to be black, just like Americans, just like Germans, just like people out in the UK. The majority of the UK people who you see in the Olympics, half of them from the Caribbean. When you see Canadians running from <laughs> for Canada. In, in, in a field of track, uh, track and field events, most of them probably from the Caribbean too. Most of them, you know, France as well. They from probably from Africa, but their politics is as such where they see themselves nationalistically as the country of, of uh, 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 where they hold the citizenship. They don't say, "Oh, I'm I'm from Ghana. My parents are from Ghana, so I'm a Ghanaian, but I'm repping." Repping Israel, they see themselves as Israeli. They went, they came up under the system. They've been conditioned um, under the system, under that system. They see themselves as such. So I don't, I don't necessarily begrudge them. I just hold them to the standard that they, they tell the world who they are. <laughs> you know, they tell in the world who they are. Granted, they may have historical politics. Granted, they may have historical grievances. But if they don't stand on the platform and say, "I am this," I am a Muslim person first. I am a black conscious Gaviite first. I am this kind of specific person. Well, you just a representative of the country, of the, the flag that you were wearing. You are a nationalistic, you are an American citizen, and I hold you to that standard. But that's how I look at that. And, and I'm very careful when I talk about na uh, nationalistic politics because some people get very touchy on these kinds of subjects. But I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. Wait, wait, before you go, boy, what would Gavi say? <laughs> Gavi, Gavi would say, Gavi would say, you must rep, be repping the, the red, uh, gold, and green. That's the flag you're supposed to be uh, uh, practicing uh, on, under the Olympics. If you win the Olympics, you are repping red, gold, and green. So wherever red, that nation is in Africa, 
red, black, and green. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Red, black, and green. That is the that is the the flag that you are in the Olympics under. Wherever that country is, you are representing that color. Red, black, and green. True and true. That's what Gavi would say. Where are my our colors? <laughs> that this is our colors. You know. But I will leave it. Appreciate that, Buana. Let me go to. Let me go to Black Steel. Black Steel would say. Well, a um, couple of things. First of all, there's a, I'm noticing some things in common. So it mentioned USA, Belgium, England, Australia, Germany. Um, you mentioned France and Israel. So one thing all of these countries have in common is that they are either settler colonies or they establish settler colonialism. So, for example, um, Australia, they... Elim they eliminated a, the majority of the pop of the Aboriginal population, replaced them with natives. Uh, in in America, they they exterminated a large amount of the indigenous Native American population. Um, Germany went to Namibia, exterminated people there. You know to build up colonies. You know, of course, hell, Germany practiced settler colonialism in Europe, which was a no no. You know, they were okay with them practicing settler colonialism in you know, the Americas and Africa and Asia, but for them to practice settler colonialism in Europe, that's just complete no-go. That's why everybody is so upset with Germany because, you know, that's, that's what the idea of Liebenstrom was, living space. That's what Hitler wanted for the German people. He wanted to eliminate the inferior races. In America, they called it manifest destiny. The only difference between manifest destiny and Liebenstrom is the fact that manifest destiny was more or less successful. But anyways, to my to my point, um, people are upset about this because Israel is really the newest settler colonial state on the block, right? And many of this the atrocities that were done via settler colonialism and you know European invasion, they're they're considered history. We don't really think about what happened to the Aboriginal Australians because that was a long time ago. You know, they they give them Aboriginal Australia Month. You know, in America, we, we have Native American History Month. You got a few black people who are, you know, representing and, you know, in, in the Olympics because all of that stuff happened a long time ago. Whereas it's a little different with Israel because their settler colonialism is ongoing and it's being live streamed. Right. So the events that happened in America's past where they enslaved Africans, where they killed off, you know, the population that you know that you're not seeing that face to face whereas um now is is currently being broadcast to you in 4K so that's why people may be upset or why are you going with this settler colonial colonial nation and but yet people don't have a problem with this other settler colonial nation because it's a matter of when it's happening they're not wrong they're not wrong in saying that you should be as as aggressive towards the people representing America or, or or Great Britain, but at the same time, you have one nation that's currently um, enacting a genocide, which is which is can be seen for the whole world to see, versus America, where most of their well, I'm going to say most of their their most horrific crimes are in the past, or not even in the past, because again, that that sister was murdered their crimes are not as well broadcast, I should say. So the, 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 they mentioned the cop who got killed, who killed the young sister who had the pot of water, right? That cop got arrested, you know, and we'll see just because and he had to get arrested because America likes to save face. Even though this is a racist nation, they can't really show be, show how racist they really are because they want to try to pretend to be some sort of moral paragon in the you know to the world, whereas in Israel, um, you know they they just had they literally had a protest trying to free people who were raping Palestinian men in prison. So all of these countries, you know, there's their their settler colonial ways are in the past so much to where they they still involve them, but it's not as open, it's not as in your face, I would say. And I guess there's some, there's a, a slippery slope between that, which is why I say the person making this argument, they're not wrong, 
right? About why is it? But I think also too, there's no, there's no African nation, right? There are African nations, you know, in, in the continent. There's 54, 55 nations in Africa, but there is not a unified African nation, which is what Garvey wanted, right? So when you're talking about um, uh, what him not representing a lot of i think africa as a continent has the lowest medal count of any continent i think and they've never hosted in olympic games they, you know there's never been an african nation to host uh olympic games so a lot of these athletes if they were to stay in their home country i don't think they would be able to get the support that they would need as far as access to training facilities and things like that uh that's why they tend to go with the settler colonial nations and like to only point they were born there so in their mind they, they don't have a an african or a black revolutionary or black even a black nationalist worldview which is to be expected most black people don't truth be told and i, I believe it, it was dr king who said there are some black people who will never fight for freedom they just want to go along and get along wake up go to work you know, live their lives and try to keep their heads down. And that's a majority of, of um, people in the world. Most people are okay with the status quo as long as it doesn't affect them uh, too much. And I think as those of us who are um, conscious or those of us who do have Black revolutionary ideas, I think we have to do our best to raise the contradiction and educate our people because eventually this this violent racist system will kill us if if they need to maintain control um and i think that many of our young people there when they're experience this 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 world they live in they don't know what to do sometimes they they turn they they turn to reactionary thoughts of you, they become religious, they try to find, you know, oh, why is this happening to me? Are we cursed by God? They fall into occultism. But I think that those of us who are conscious have a responsibility to educate our people. So that way they don't, you know, end up, they don't wear the, the uniform of settler colonial nations and not just Israel, but, you know, the other nations as well. I'll leave it there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Black Steel. Brother Bukhari is in the chat. He said earlier, I lost the, the message now, but he said in the chat earlier that he was watching the Little League um, and the Czech, uh, the World the World Series of, of, of the Little League, I believe it was, and the Czech Republic even had Black folks playing for that team. Uh, so, uh, so just a reminder, as we go through these topics and you give your, your thoughts uh, because it's Garvey's day, uh, make sure to, you know, at the end of your thoughts, give us what what, what you think Gavi would say uh, to the topic. Uh, let's continue on with our brother Anthony McPhail. Anthony, what say you to this? Uh, yeah, I I think I pretty much agree with what all other brothers are saying, man. Uh, I think it's a uh, I think we could uh a lot of it boils down to uh like uh what the crawl was saying about our consciousness, man. We don't have we don't have the same level of black consciousness consciousness that we had at one time, you know, say in the in the late sixties, early seventies. You know, and, uh I mean and it and it, 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 it shows. I mean we uh it, it made me think about what uh what uh Harriet Tubman said, man. Uh she said I could have freed more more enslaved Africans if they only knew they were slaves. You know what I'm saying, Coco? He said if they knew they were slaves, I could have freed more of them. And like right now today, we just I think we just satisfied with the way things are. I mean, it's just like uh I think say in the sixties you had like the brother John Carlos and uh you know Tommy Smith and you know and what they did at the the Olympics in Mexico City. I think, you know, I mean, as great as that was, though, as far as symbolism, I think they were saying, like, okay, that was one part. They were saying, like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I'm I'm a black man and I'm an American. But at the same time, what I mean is what 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 I'm what I'm fighting for is 
for black people to have, you know, their full dignity as a human being. You know, he won't. You know, he won't. He was trying. They was trying to put America on blast. That's what I look. That's the way I look at. They were trying to put America on blast. He said, "Yeah, I still live here. We got equity in the country. We built, but we want them to live up to what they supposed to, what it's supposed to be." You know, I think that was a uh, that was a good starting point. But like, uh, I mean, I don't, it, during the Olympics, man. I mean, I didn't root for America in nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I mean, I didn't root for them in nothing, man. I was glad all of the brothers and sisters from the Caribbean won and Africa won. You know, I mean, I didn't root for America, you know, any of his allies, any of that shit, man. I mean, everybody I wrote for was from the black country. But I just think, uh, it, it, I think it goes that it goes back to our consciousness, though, man. And then, you know, with this, uh, especially with this, uh, black folks in America and Israel, you know, it, it also you it goes back to that, uh, to that Bible, too, man. And that, that old, that old good time religion, you know, I mean, the Israelites and, you know, and being slaves in Egypt and all that, and we associate that with us and looking at them like they're the people of God, they're the chosen people, and all of you know, all of this old foolishness right here. But uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, you know, it's kind of frustrating sometimes, man, because when I look up and I see the brothers, you know, carrying around this damn American flag, and you know, they up the police still shooting and killing sisters in their house, and what shooting pregnant women and shooting brothers and. I mean, and all of the bullshit that we going through, and you like, I mean, you really, you really gonna wait, go put that flag on you like that? I mean, like you know, and it just, it, it don't make sense to me, man. It's just, it just, it's, it's frustrating sometimes. I don't want to go on too much, but I leave it at that, man. I, pre I agree with all, what all the brothers said. What would Gabby say? Man, y'all need to get the hell up out of here. All right, I appreciate that, Anthony. Uh, let's welcome in uh, our most recent addition to the panel. Let's welcome in Jose. Jose, how are you this week? Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Let's keep it that okay. Okay. All right. Uh, real quick, I, I scratched what I said earlier. I misread what Brother Makai was saying. He said there were no black players on that team. They all look like Trump and Putin. So I misunderstood what he was saying about that team. So I'll, I'll try to figure it out. While Jose is, is uh, talking, go ahead, Jose. Yes, I uh, I misunderstood it too. Uh, so uh, I I commented some something about uh, somebody I know that is uh, selling uh, among others uh, Cape Verdean young uh, soccer players to uh, Eastern uh, Eastern uh, European uh, B C or D uh, clubs, and I'm 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 sort of angry with him because you know a lot of uh, sporters they have this discipline in sport, but. Most of the times they are also disciplined in other things like studying and, and, and stuff. But, but maybe not in soccer because there's a lot of money uh, to make in soccer and football and, and, and baseball, etc. But these, these, these type of athletes, a lot of, time, a lot of times, I, I, I guess, I guess this, this brother is a student in, in, in Israel. I, I, I guess, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. A, a Ghanaian, what the fuck are you doing there? But uh, yeah, yeah, isn't he a kushi? Isn't he a kushi in Israel? I mean, I mean, I I know I know a, a couple of Palestinian guys. Uh, uh, what what Rotterdam what what Rotterdam is to Cape Verdeans, uh, a, a city nearby is uh, for uh, Cape uh, for Palestinian uh, people, and I I lived there a couple of years, so I have uh, I have quite some uh, Palestinians in my uh, in my vicinity. And uh, 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 one of them have black people in the family, and um, there's a niece of him, uh, and he li he likes her, and he he played like uh, yeah I'll, I'll take you to the Netherlands, and she was like yeah uh, yeah but what do they want with a blackie over there, right? So so yeah I don't know what to think maybe maybe he uh, maybe he uh, maybe he empowers with you know with. With him running for Israel, maybe maybe black folks, uh, black Palestinians feel better. I don't I don't know what to think. You know, what would uh, Marcus Garvey say? Go home, brother. Go home. I appreciate that, Jose. I appreciate that from everyone. Um, so we've heard what everyone has to say. We've seen what everyone has been saying in the chat. Is there any last comments that anyone would like to make? 
Yeah, I want, I, want, I want to say one one thing really quickly. I, um, Anthony McPhail touched on the religion por por portion of it, right? And I think a lot of, we well, only, only mention how Black people support Israel, right? I think a lot of it does have to do with the Christianity and, and the relationship with the Jews and Christianity, Jesus and everything else, God, chosen people, I shall bless thee. I shall bless them that bless thee and I shall curse them that curse thee type of shit, right? A lot of our people, especially if you're born into uh, a religious home, a religious family, that, that, is, that is bred and taught to you at a young age. It's, it's, Americans are the most propagandized people in the world. And I, I've said that before, but I really don't think we understand it, how propagandized we are. They, they really think that other countries of the world hate us because of our freedom. <laughs> they re a lot of people really believe that. And that's, that, and that's um, the indoctrination that is, is so strong in this country. And Black people aren't exempt from that. And there was a time, I can remember growing up in the 80s, where Black people knew just certain things was not meant for us. Like... I remember being told when I was in ROTC, when I was in high school, and my uncle said, boy, don't you join that military? Ain't nothing, ain't nothing good in there for a black man. It, you know, and they had went to Vietnam. They had experienced some of the racism of white officers in, in the service. So, but then, you know, black people were very vocal when it came to, you know, U.S. imperialism, intervention in foreign wars. And then, you know, Barack Obama comes in and you got a black man in the office with his beautiful black family. And then I started to see kind of a turn, like, you know, black people supporting shit that we used to not support anymore, you know? So I think that's kind of speaks to the danger of intersectionality um, black girl magic, right? Sometimes you put a black face on things and I guess it's supposed to make it better, but we got to be careful because they'll have a, you'll have be celebrating a black person in the Waffen SS if you don't, if you're don't if you not careful with that type of stuff. So, but yeah, I think the religious indoctrination really does play a part in the overall propaganda that Americans are subjected to 24 seven. I appreciate that black steel. I'll just uh, read off some comments there. Trick Happy 262 Plus said, I think black people need to get their priorities straight. If they aren't against their direct enemies, it just tells you we don't have a codified identity. America is destroying the Congo right now. Um, shout out to, uh, to Talawa, who's here as well in the chat, active in the chat, uh, having some conversations out there. Um, he says, Talawa does, he says, one thing the Barack A. Bomber, uh, talking about um, Obama, uh, thing reveals is the one drop rule problem. Lack of a mulatto analysis amplifies the other problem. So, yeah, uh, good commentary from everyone on the panel. Good co good comments from the chat. Let's keep it rolling as we go to shoot the breeze topic number two, which is a little bit on the same topic, so to speak. 